Hey, I'm Yannick Wistala. It's the Yannick Wistala podcast. And no, the title, the thumbnail, the concept for this video is not clickbait. I am going to try and shoot out a 10,000 ish dollar custom base signature model against a base you can buy right now on the interwebs. I saw this on Sweetwater, I think, uh, for $219.19. This is Chelsea's, that my wife, for anyone who doesn't know, this is Chelsea's very first bass. Also, for anyone who doesn't know, she's a fantastic bass player. And um, this, this video is kind of inspired by the recent uh, blindfold bass shootout um, with Ian Martin Allison. If you haven't seen that, go check that on my channel. I'll link it in the description below. Um, and also by the, the flight case episode of the podcast I did last time out, talking about flight cases, talking about traveling around the world with these instruments. And just in the same way I I found that monster anvil case in the corner hiding that I'd completely forgotten about. I also saw one of Chelsea's old bases. I picked it up, I plugged it in, and well, let's not give it away. We are going to shoot them out. I'm going to get into great depths of... of uh, I'm just going to get into some great depths, I think, probably out of my depth. You can tell I'm so prepared this week. So before we get into that, I just want to say uh, we are massively back in stock, actually for the first time in such a long time, in terms of books we have uh, from Practice Performance, Bass Player's Guide to Pentatonics, Bass Player's Guide to Sight Reading, Chordal Harmony, Jazz Vocabulary for Electric Bass 251, and my Iconic Lines book. I'm talking about signed physical copies that ship here from my studio worldwide. They just came in in the last three days. I've had um, three fresh orders of books as always they're they're limited there's probably only 20 of each that came in but they are available you know um, i like to let you guys on the podcast know about it first so go grab them they're linked in the description below you can also get physical copies unsigned albeit at amazon and of course the digital ones are all there on my website yannickwistala.com forward slash store let's get stuck into these bases now for everyone listening to the podcast you're going to get, I mean, I hope you can hear the difference right away, but you are going to get the, oh, I, at some point I might not be sure which one he's playing um, because there are some things that you can do with this really cheap bass that I would never have thought possible. Um, let's take my bass that you all know probably at this point, if you've been watching the channel for a while, it's the Matteson, it's the five string single cut. Still, after all these years, officially a prototype because um, it never really got finished. But this is the the one, the, you know, the one I play probably most often for my own music. And that's the bass. That's the sound. Uh, wow. Well. <laughs> It has that extended range. I have a high C. I'm tuned E, A, D, G, C on this instrument. So I get the option to play a little pretty chord. Chords like that. Chords like that in the upper register of the instrument and melodies. Not quite in tune, actually. See, I'm really... I just ran in from dropping my daughter at daycare to get this one, this episode cranked out. So I went kind of straight into it. But let's see, that's that's the Matteson. And it's uh, it's not obviously not a cheap bass. It's a what we what we kind of call a master built instrument, 100% built by hand by Anders, only his hands on the instrument. Um, it's kind of a process. It's a beautiful piece of, at the end of the day, it's almost a piece of art, um, I kind of feel like. Um, but it's a beautifully crafted instrument. There's no CNC. There's no production element of it. It's uh, even though there were a few of these made and people ordered like this signature version of my bass. It's they, these are really all kind of one of one in that sense. Even though they are part of a line, um, the way they get sort of hand finished and everything to me is is one of one. And I know that. Every bass, even though it's like my style and shape and design or whatever, is going to be a little bit different and have different characteristics to it. So that's something I think you get from what, what I don't know, do we call it a boutique bass? Do we call it a custom bass, a handmade bass? Like, what, you know, there's so many names get thrown around for that. Um, I think 
boutique gets a little bit overused maybe because uh, it's it's starting to become i think it's starting to become a little bit of a wider um a wider terminology so I, I like to go with custom or handmade it's because i think it's the handmade element that's probably the most important thing to me that's the thing of most value when it comes to uh, an instrument that costs so much money i think that's i think it's really what you're paying for i don't think it's necessarily the sometimes it's the wood just because the, the, the wood is and i'm not talking about sound i'm just talking about the sheer cost of the wood sometimes wood is not cheap um, this is American elm, so it's a kind of an easily sourceable wood. This is not like a super rare one of one, you know, flame maple or buckeye burl top. I know we're getting into the nerdy weeds of of base design and, and construction here, but I just want to highlight, you know, the major differences between these two. And let's see, I really have this set up the wrong way where my pedal board's behind me. Um, so uh, let's hit the mute. Let's plug Chelsea's bass in. Um, she is currently scouring the archives for a photograph of her playing this thing when she was a kid. I think she got this when she was 13. So hopefully I'll be able to pop that up on the screen in the edit now. But um, which camera? I got to talk about how many cameras I'm using here as well in a second. There's a massive ding, massive dent uh, out of the neck. And that didn't happen recently. You know, it's all colored in and dirty. So, you know, that happened early doors. The back of the, the neck is kind of dinged up in the back. It's had a lot of use. Um, I have no idea what the woods are on this. It's uh, it's a solid finish. It's not a natural wood finish for those of you who are not looking, not watching on YouTube. It's a PJ uh, setup. Uh, it's volume, volume, tone. So very simple in terms of controls. Um, the electronics are completely uh, effed, shall we say? Um, really noisy. So the output jack is going to make, there we go, right on cue, is definitely going to make some noise. <laughs> so I've got to kind of get it balanced. I might have to go against all of my um, technique preferences and put the bass on my right knee. Right, oh, ah. come on. Come on, just give me five minutes of it being okay. See if I can... Okay, this is Chelsea's bass. This is the bass she has had since she was 12 or 13 years old. We're talking the opposite in almost every sense of the word, other than it is still technically a bass between this and the Matheson. It is obviously not handmade, very much CNC or, or factory made, production made, um, definitely cheaper woods. Um, cheaper finishing options i'm gonna guess of course knowing my wife and knowing how often she changes her strings which in the seven years we've been together is uh zero times because i think i've actually changed her strings every time sorry babe and i'm going to be very interrupted here because as you might be able to tell if you're watching on youtube you i actually quite like playing it not for the sentimental reasons and the personal reasons that it's my wife's very first bass but because it's actually quite playable i've got to get the model number so i can tell you here it's the yamaha trb x174 bass guitar red metallic oh i've even got the specs here it's got an alder body a maple neck a what i thought that said snorkeling but it says sonakelling fingerboard <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what the hell that is? And yeah, and a red metallic finish. Um, I should read the blurb because they're not wrong, actually. It says the Yamaha blah, blah, blah bass guitar is an outstanding is an outstanding value for the modern bassist. Um, I got to say for $219.99. And obviously she bought this bass or this bass was purchased some uh, uh, 20 years ago. Um, so nobody's sponsoring this video, uh, if, if that needed to be made clear. I'm going to turn the reverb off um, so you can get an idea of the clean sound. That's just the P pickups. And guess what? It sounds like a fucking bass. And 
I think these strings have been on since she bought it. I, if I, <laughs> they're rusty in places, the poles of the pickups are rusty in places. It hasn't been taken care of uh, that much. Also, not, I'm not to say she doesn't take care of her instruments. I'm just saying this bass has sat for a very long time and been moved kind of from house to house. When we've moved, it's not exactly on the roster these days in terms of a, of a bass that gets used a lot. But I'm kind of half, I let the cat out of the bag now if I do this, but I'm kind of half thinking about taking it to like a gig in town, like maybe a Bob Reynolds gig at the Baked Potato, if I can get that output jack sorted so it doesn't make a ton of noise. I don't think I could sit in podcast mode this motionless for the entirety of the gig. But I can get around the instrument. Um, let's see. Uh, no. I can play Bob Reynolds tunes on this instrument. Yeah, I, I think I think it would be funny or fun and maybe a little funny when the guys look around like, what the hell are you playing? Um, and kind of interesting in terms of, you know, a $220 bass and how functional it could possibly be. I wrote this tune called The Last Dance for Bob for the last album. I wonder if I could play the melody. <laughs> The answer is no, uh, accurately right away, but obviously I've got the range. It's a 24 fret. I mean, they were just... I didn't expect to, to hit record and start gushing about a bass that's 20 years old, cost $220. And actually back then, I think Chelsea said it was like 110 or something ridiculous, like extra, extra cheap. And just be kind of digging it. And we're still, we're just on the P pickups, uh, on the front pickups with all the tone rolled off. Here's tone rolled in. Well, it's a little aggressive, but it's it, it can be kind of, let's see if I've got uh, a pick close to hand. That could be kind of very functional. Um, what do I have here? Um, Blasting and destroying the session here, blasting your ears. I mean, come on. I know, I know sound is subjective and what sounds good and what doesn't, blah blah blah, but it's not bad, you know? I gotta say, I'm I'm not I'm not mad about that sound at all. And let, let's get back on the on the jazz pickup on the back with no tone. I mean, you've basically got sort of a legit P and a legit J bass for $220. Uh, Sticking you like an old soul record, Michelle and Dega cello bass line, just uh, for anyone wondering, one of my favorite records of all time. Let's give some tone to the back pickup. Oh, it definitely put some highs in there. And I mean, I think that's also, ooh, gives you some, definitely enhances the ground hum element. <laughs> yep, yeah, okay. All right, I'm really not sure where the comparison is going to be here because I'm sort of just loving playing the bass. I really didn't expect that. Let's put both pickups on. And put my money where my mouth is and try and do like some... Uh. Man, I'm even finding the harmonics. That's crazy. That's interesting. 
I mean, just imagine what it might be might feel like if I put a new set of strings on here. In fact, it would it would change everything. I wouldn't be able to get that. Ah, sorry, got my leg caught here. Totally put me off. I know that's not in the song, but. <laughs> Okay, get in the comments. Let me know what you think. Was this shocking? Did you already know this was coming? Like, were you way more um, dialed into the fact that these cheaper Yamaha basses sound fantastic, even when they got chunks out of the neck and strings that are 20 years old and rusted and the setup and the output jack is screwed and the pickups and poles are literally uh, rusting under my fingers? I don't know. Um, it's really interesting. Of course, like, you look on the back, like, the okay, hang on. Oops. Let's take a little closer look at it. If you look on the back of the instrument, you can see that it's really not, you know, in terms of finesse and nuance and, and uh, you know, design aesthetic. I mean, the back plate is like sticking way up outside. It's not recessed into the body. Um, wow. I mean, this, this thing has a crack down the back. I've just noticed there's a massive crack like it was dropped. I wonder if that's cracked all the way through or whether that's just the the red what do they call this finish red metallic finish i wonder if that's just the red metallic finish that's cracked i hope it's just a finish um it'd be so interesting to keep this bass for, for well forever actually for another 20 years i wonder what these strings are i think they're nickels and not steels so it's like everything i you know technically don't like or don't use feels freaking great on this on this instrument which is it's, it's nuts right it's totally it, it, on paper it doesn't make any sense yet plug it in <laughs> if you can get it to stop making that crunching sound and it's actually not a bad little instrument and the, i gotta say to chelsea's credit i you know who knows whether she had it this high the action is not paper thin either maybe that's something i i dig about it as well or that or that kind of suits me a little better um yeah get in the comments let me know your thoughts about that i'm gonna go back to the other bass to my main instrument do some playing with this and see oh of course you know immediately I'm, i put it on and it sort of melts into my seating position my my, my playing position because it's so comfortable and so familiar so i guess that's that's one massive thing right away oh. and Of course, the nuance and the touch and sort of what I'm able to get out of it on the right hand, on my picking hand, is, is, is night and day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, you know, tough comparing a, a four string and a five string, of course. Um, I don't think that's, I don't, I don't think that's, too crazy though just because we're talking about quality it doesn't really matter how the instrument is strung and yeah of course not everyone wants to do that like wants to do this thing that i do that's not really the main function of of a bass and for bass players and like i keep saying as much as people say oh i see single car boutique custom handmade expensive all of that kind of stuff i you know, i keep trying to remind people that the youtube algorithm and back in the day when i had it the social media algorithm delivered you the the bits that that got your attention you know the fast flashy bits and that was not has never really been a true representation of my career as a bass player and i always say that almost without fail whenever i've been like sort of making the most money or doing the biggest gigs or doing anything that is sort of like 
public facing success, uh, you know, what people perceive as being successful, it's been playing a bass with four strings on it and playing very simple and not playing melodies and sticking out the way and sort of keeping the integrity of the band. So. Yeah, um, it's really a personal thing. And I think this, it's just good information if you're out there thinking like, oh, um, I wonder, you know, wonder what I should get or, you know, I'm a beginner, for instance, that would be, this would be a great place to start. Like you really can get a ton of mileage out of a bass that costs $220, which to me is insane. Um, like I always, I always say like with, with these kind of instruments, with, the, with this Mattison, for instance, what you're paying for is that, really the last few percent which to me is is for my own music is some of is where i get the most is is where i can make the most difference with my music actually um those those last few percent uh of what, of what i get out of the instruments i think that's a good uh good thing to be aware of if you're not looking for that final thing or if you're not trying to be an artist or do any of the things that i do on a daily basis and you're trying to be a bass player, so many good options. It's crazy. And then it's, you know, it's not that far where you can get to a $500 or a $1,000 bass and maybe get it so much more out of it and still not be in the stratosphere of cost, still not be burning the budget so hard. I remember one, you know, one of the main basses I used on pop tours and sessions, like early days in New York, made like pop, commercial, candy pop, jive records type of, Britney N sync style stuff and R and B and and that was on a four string Mexican P bass that I got for three hundred dollars at Sam Ash you know um, in Midtown when when all those music stores used to be there uh, so yeah I I know from experience that it's it it that you can get so much mileage out of it I believe Yossi Fine check out Yossi Fine fantastic bass player uh, used to play with um well, with everyone with michelle and degocello uh, he played in jojo mayer's band nerve and i believe he he i think he told me that he always used to play a mexican p bass like a 300 hundred dollar one because i think it was him that told me about that like put it on my radar and eventually when i got my first kind of big pop gig and the producer was like hey by the way you've got a p bass right black p bass white scratch plate oh uh, yeah yeah of course of course, I didn't, but I left the studio, ran down to Sam Ash, bought the bass for 300 bucks, and then, then I had it. And I remember Yossi putting that in my, in my ear. I thought, hey, these, these basses are pretty good, man. I'm using it on, on all these tours with everyone. So, yeah, don't, don't underestimate the power of a cheap bass. And again, like you, you, you might have to play a few of exactly the same instrument. Um, it's not like every single one's going to be the same. Like I said, not every single one of these fantastically expensive instruments is going to be the same either. So make sure you, you know, make sure you play through a bunch of them. If you can get to a store that has four or five of them in and don't be afraid to not get it as well. Like if you don't, if you like you, you're taking this information from me or, or somewhere and you say, Oh, I know that I can get it. And if you don't find it in four or five bases, go somewhere else. You know, trust me in the sense that it's there. Like you can find the instrument. You've been listening to me play a 20 year old on paper piece of crap bass, very cheap and very fucked up and not really in great working order. So trust me in the sense or trust your ears having listened to me play that instrument that you can get a lot of mileage out of it. Uh, but then also trust your own ear and your own feel and touch when you sit down in that music store and get a chance to play a few, even if they are technically the same instrument. Don't Don't be afraid to say, hey, you know what? this isn't the one I can wait a few more days or a few more weeks or go to a few more stores until I find the one that really speaks to me. Um, I have to mention very quickly, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm sort of experimenting today. I'm shooting an S log two. Uh, this is for the camera nerds out there. I'm shooting an S log two, probably overexposed on my main camera. Now I've just realized it because my ISO is at 1250. That's not great. Um, but I'm shooting with two cameras, um, getting ready to do a bunch of podcast interviews um, with fantastic bass players and heroes of mine. I'm actually going to meet Tim Landers, who's been my, a lifelong hero of mine, incredible bass player who played with everyone from Aldi Miola and, um, and uh, Billy Cobham and played in Vital Information in the band I play in now 40 years ago. And, and everything tracy chapman it's an insane 
list of of credits and and sessions and movies and jingles and and just an incredible career that tim's had and he's coming to the studio in a couple of days he'll probably be the next episode of the podcast next week really excited to do that plus brian bella Stu ham tim lafave where's my list here actually i've got a cracking list of incredible bass players of course we just had um Ian Martin Allison, that sort of kicked it all off. Uh, who else do I have on here? Tim LaFave, Stu Ham. I texted Jimmy Earl. Um, I got to reach out to Sean Hurley, to Nathan East, to Lee Sklar, Jimmy Haslip. Uh, I don't have a connection to Justin Chancellor yet, but I really want to talk to him, get us two English bass players in a room together and chat about bass, especially as he's, he's a wall guy. And I used to be a wall guy as well. So hopefully I can get in touch with him larry klein i'm super psyched to try and get in touch with and 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 talk music with um i texted briefly last year with stefan lassard from the dave matthews band so hopefully i can re uh reconnect that conversation and and get stefan stefan on the on the podcast i think it'd be a pretty fascinating conversation to talk about stadium bass and sort of being in a band your entire life something i've never done and something i'm always fascinated by to that end i'd love to talk to doug pinnick as well from king's x who's a big hero of mine i've met him a couple of times very briefly but it'd be nice to sit down with him and talk about i think he's in his 70s now and he's basically played with king's x his king's x his entire career which i think is a fascinating thing um so yeah that's hence the two camera setup if you're not watching on uh, on youtube go over to the channel hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you can it really really helps uh make things like literally all the things that i've just discussed <clears throat> if there's a justin chancellor or a, whoever it is like a huge hero type bass player out there that i would love to talk to it makes it really more viable if they look at the channel and go oh you've got 500 subscribers yeah i think i'll pass uh, versus like, oh, you got 100 or 200 or 300,000 subscribers, it actually makes it more of sort of a legit media platform, shall we say. I mean, I, I know it's still me. I'm still going to have the same conversation, ask the same questions. Um, but the perspective from the outside <clears throat> is a very important element in making some of those conversations happen in the first place. So, um, all right, that's enough promo of my own channel. You guys know the deal. What do you think about these two bases? And how how would you feel about maybe you have some bases there's a good one maybe you have some bases in your collection that are uh, that have varying price uh, points on them how brutally honest can you be with yourself with your own collection on the high end on the, on the higher end of prices like where you know can you really go in and be so honest about mm, well let's you know take a p base or something take something that's fairly standard something that everyone knows something that we all know works and then start comparing it to some of your higher end instruments and um you know for me i've done that so much you know i know exactly what it is that i want out of this instrument um and there's no right or wrong either i just think it's an interesting exercise to see what you come up with to see if you get to the point where you're like oh you know what i can actually start taking the regular bass out a little bit more on the gigs rather than the crazy expensive fancy one that i got for that really specific thing um i think that speaks to what i was talking about with the flight case thing and traveling with the instruments as well like how to become a little less precious with your most uh expensive instruments and maybe eradicating <clears throat> that as being an issue uh f for you when you travel with your instruments you know so okay i can show up you know my bass gets lost all right it gets delayed it'll come in a couple of days and i can play on p basses and yamaha trb what i got <laughs> so many numbers and letters yamaha trb x174 wow can they just call it yamaha the red bass i don't know um but yeah I, like it's crazy to think that i could show up somewhere without my main bit instrument and actually do my whole gig on this thing you know I want to end the episode with putting the putting the cheap bass through the through the ringer here. Like giving it the treatment with the pedals and seeing how it responds to an octave pedal and a synth pedal. Let's do that. And you know, how much could I get through, really get through my gig with all of those kind of crazy sounds? Not necessarily the looping and stuff. I don't think I'm going to get into that right now. But 
Let's let's put it through some synth stuff. Oh, let's let's get it to work first. Uh, there it is. Ooh, fat. That doesn't sound bad. It sounds like it. Oh. Ooh. Okay, so that's the quarter inch output. It's not the bass. Or not the not the acoustic element of the bass. Producer, let's try. Woo. <laughs> let's set this up so it's in the low. Woo. Maybe give it some verb, huh? Huh? Ho, 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 ho. Just a little taste. It's probably blasting the logic session. Yeah, oh my god, it's gonna be some distortion. Sorry, cats. Could do a nerve gig on this do so many gigs on this thing and how about let's go harmonizer for a second Ooh, okay oh, that's a bit aggressive oh, I, got that. I gotta get that quarter inch figured out i can't believe i might actually go get some work done on a bass that isn't mine is 20 years old and is a piece of junk <laughs> I know this is going to be driving the session a little bit too much. Oh, but it's, I mean, let's, let's give it actually some, there we go, give it some uh, tone. Let's try a different patch with that tone. Okay. Ah, so noisy the output. That's a that's a real drag, man. Sorry, cat. But it works. Maybe a little less tone.
it's like it's actually fun it's inspiring to play it does not suck as an instrument um well i'm just actually really grateful to get to uh, a place of you know such a place of music and sort of creativity at least in my lane what i enjoy doing um okay last time <laughs> That's it. We're retiring this one for the day. No more quarter-inch output honkiness. Um, yeah. So I'm about to leave on the road. I'm about to leave on tour. What are we today? It's Monday, April 1st, 2024. A few days I'll be out of here. We uh, start in Hicksville, New York. We go to Marlborough, New York. We play in Littitz, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's just a four-date run, and the the last the, the final date of the run is at the Burks Jazz Festival in Reading, Pennsylvania. All the dates are at my website, yannickwasdala.com forward slash tour. It's linked below. And like I said, at the top of the episode, there are a very limited number of these of these books, these uh, iconic lines, pentatonics, practice the performance, chordal harmony, 251, and bass player's guide to sight reading. Just did... Um, cool video on sight reading on the channel very recently go check that out if you haven't already and uh that's it yeah signed copy shipping worldwide from my studio everything is linked below i'm gonna bank another episode this week so uh we are not without oh like i said with the with the tim landers thing we're gonna do that early so we are not without an episode next week and then i'll be back live so to speak in sequence in time the following week in uh, as we get into april yeah again Hit me in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on uh, on the budget. Budget versus boutique. Shit, have I just come up with the title? $200 budget versus $10,000 boutique base. Ah, oh, it sounds so clickbaity, but it's really not. If I didn't, like, if I didn't dislike the term boutique that much, I might think about using that in the title. But either way, I am shooting out bases that are $9,800 apart in price. And as you can tell, um, they're sort of 90% uh closer together than that price is which is which is amazing for people out there i think who who don't have a massive budget and who want to get into playing the bass so that's it happy bass playing happy practicing really appreciate you spending some of your immensely precious time with me talking about music learning about the bass and i'll see you all on the next video mm -hmm.